past the giant red teapot. Oh, it makes me happy that there's still tourists. You know what? It makes for a good picture. Like, how pretty is that? That's so cute. Very Wes Anderson. Why is Notting Hill so expensive to live in when not even 50 years ago, no one really wanted to live here? What has happened? What is the change of heart? So in today's video, I'm gonna show you the sights and all of the wonderful and interesting history of Notting Hill. So let's do this. I'm gonna throw up a map now so you know where we are in the world. And yes, I'm gonna take you around some of the beautiful, beautiful, I mean, look at this road, side streets along uh, Portobello Road and uh, yeah, show you some places that you may not have seen before. Yes, it used to be a pottery and pig farm area uh, in the early 1800s. Could you imagine? But yes, this didn't get developed until well into the 1800s. And um, yeah, the area was not great. And as I roll through the west side of Notting Hill, look at these houses. We do have some hills, hence the name Notting Hill. And this area was actually used as a race course, guys. I didn't even know this until I was Googling and doing a bit of research. But yes, there was a seven foot wall that got built all the way around. I think it was more of a fence, to be honest. And yeah, it was used for a race course with all the kind of little up and down hills, uh, which now are very difficult to cycle up to, even on an e-bike. Um, but yeah, and it was a bit of a recreation area. But more on that in a moment. Look at these beautiful homes. Oh my gosh, I cycle through here. Oh, look at that car. Uh, quite often on my way to work and see my friends, and I just love it. It's stunning. There's a very famous garden down here. Look at those guys. I hate to break it to you, but even if you're on the lottery, you can't afford these. I think that one was for sale for like 18 million or something obscene like that. Um, and we have Rose Mead Garden. Anyone recognize this from a certain Thacker who tried to get over <laughs> the fence with a certain Julia Roberts? Yes, this is the walled, beautiful garden that you see in the 1990, is it 99? Movie uh, Notting Hill, which made this area um, very, very famous. I don't know anybody, I don't trust anybody who doesn't like that film, okay? It's definitely in my top five of romantic comedies that I adore. And I'm so glad it's sunny today. I've been trying to film this for a long time. And if you're in the UK, it's been raining for about a month, hasn't it? But saying that, the weekend that I am uploading this is the Notting Hill Carnival. And I'll tell you a little bit about the history of that because it's really interesting. And I didn't know this until recent times, um, but it's meant to be 23, 24 degrees. So I'm hoping when you watch this, it is sunny. But if you're watching this in the future future, um, bring a coat maybe and an umbrella if you're coming to London because it's always raining. So I mentioned that race course. It didn't last for very long. It was only a few years, some say five years, some say eight years, um, and it closed down. And there was a guy called James Ladbrook, uh, as in Ladbrook Grove, obviously got named after him. And he was like, I want to develop the area. And um, yeah, it wasn't until about 1900 that this area kind of became nice and they started building actual buildings for residents. I have to show you Portland Road. I cycled through here very, very often in the other morning. I think it was like 7 a.m. And I thought, oh, this is a vibe. Got to show you in a video. But yes, the houses were all very, very nice. It was an absolute planning and residential development failure. I mean, look at these buildings, they're gorgeous. But yes, it was just too expensive and no one could afford it. So the big houses, they had to be converted into multi-households. And this was before they were planned to be flat. So a lot of the time people had some shared living spaces and then you rented a room and it was for laborers and people who were working in the city for different households. It was an epic failure. Yeah, it was meant to be for people who just didn't have high income. It was, all, it was basically for almost working class families. Um, and yeah, it became a little bit of a slum because the living conditions were a little bit questionable and it just didn't come the area that Ladbrook had hoped for. Did I say it? it is a Sunday morning? I've come out. I think it's like just gone, it's like nearly half past nine in the morning, but this is such a good way to see the sights. If you're maybe staying in London for a long time, um, get up, get on a bike and explore. And then we have Penzance Place. Oh, I love the architecture around here. But yes, it is late 1800s into 1900s, as I said. That's when this area got developed fun fact for the pub quiz. It was actually called Notting Dale and then later got named to Notting Hill. Might, might win you a point. Claddon Cross is a personal favour of mine. Look at these buildings. I think I would paint mine pastely, but I love that. Clarendon works. That's a cool building. Notting Hill, Notting very steep hill. <laughs> And if you don't have a pastel colored house, you do have to have a very fresh white looking house. This is amazing. Looks similar to Brighton actually. But yes, you have got these huge, huge houses. Um, a lot of them were, as I say, converted into flats. And then we're gonna head along to Portobello Road very shortly, don't you worry guys. But yes, just wanted to show you kind of the main hill of Notting Hill. It's very similar to Brighton, isn't it? And um, Paddington, Marlebone's a little bit like this, Bayswater. 
The sun is shining, Westbourne Grove, which goes all the way through, almost to Paddington. I will take you along there at the end, don't you worry. You've got the Paul Smith store on the corner. Do you see what I mean? Everything's very bougie. And uh, you would have noticed quite a lot of construction and scaffolding on the buildings because things are still developing here. As you may be aware, things definitely changed after the war. So after the Second World War, London was heavily hit by a lot of bombings. And so a lot of the buildings in this area and all of London were destroyed, which is why you see a lot of like 50s, 60s and 70s buildings um, which have filled the gaps. Oh wow, look at this church. Oh, that's not the time. I was going to say I've been that long. Um, can hear some music coming from that church. But yeah, so you have got a little bit of a mishmash. It's a bit patchwork in places. Oh, but every time I see this building, I love it. I love anything symmetrical. It's very Wes Anderson. <laughs> I think they should have called it Notting Crescent. There are so many crescents, these beautiful curved roads, and that these houses, yes, would have been houses and converted into flats. Now, some people are bougie enough and rich enough, and they've converted them back into full households. Oh, and you've got one of the little green taxi cabs um, where people can go and get refreshments. If you're a taxi driver, black cabbie, you can sit inside and you know have your bacon sandwich and everything. Oh, but look at this cute little street. But now we are at Stone's Throw from Notting Hill uh, Gate Station. And I'm going to take you along and let's see, can I cycle down Portobello Road? I don't know. Guess we'll find out in a few minutes. Sunday morning for the win. I'm on Pembridge Road. If you guys visited London, have you been here? You would probably of experience. I can't believe how quiet it is. Uh, maybe part falling off the curb here. This is the little walkway down to Portobello Road Market. And there has all these cute little shops. And you'll see lots of shops that have a musical influence, bric-a-brac and lots of knick-knacks. Which brings me on to why is Portobello Road so famous? Like it's surely just another market. But um, as I was saying, post Second World War in the late 40s, it was just another market in London. Nothing really to shout about or call home about. Um, but basically it became kind of known for knick-knacks, bric-a-brac. The rag and bone man was here selling his bits and bobs. And um, yeah, it just became known to go and get your stuff from here. And it was still had fruit and veg and different food options um, and antiques started to come in when more things came in from overseas and like I said where it was meant to be in theory a more affordable area also needed kind of cheaper second-hand things so hence why oh nice car um, it did really well yes supply and demand so this area was a nice place to come and get your cheap bits and bobs and today you can still get some really fantastic things I'm going to show you antiques food knickknacks and I love seeing other people's kind of proper tourist videos and seeing what bits they got. I watched someone the other day and they bought some doorknobs and went back to America. And I thought, that's kind of fun. Everyone always loves getting little pics of that first curve as you come around. And we kind of hit the tourist area, which I love. It's so cute. And yes, I'm gonna head down to the market. This is weird because it's pretty quiet along here. As I said, I think it's about 10 to 10 on a Sunday morning. If you wanna get your Instagram shots, you need to come down early. And uh, yeah, this is a residential road. Although I must confess, I don't think I'd actually want to live this central um, to the market. If you've been down here, this is usually chocker block. George Orwell's gonna show you this blue plaque. There we go, he lived there quite some time ago. I really wish I could hold my phone and vlog and cycle, but I'm a little bit shaky. It would be like this the whole time. But here I've got so many different colors. I think this dark one here, eek, by the lamppost is the one that gets Instagrammed a lot, but I'm not good enough at Photoshop to remove the cars. I love the random tropical trees in this part. But I know you guys want to see some of the little shops. I can't do that from a bike. And there's actually five sections of Portobello Road Market, secondhand antiques, fashion, food, and what's the other one, household. But you should always come to these food markets hungry. Or well, any market really in London, we're pretty good. I mean, that sells hot dogs actually. What have we got, £4.50. But along the top of Portobello Road Market, you have all the little stores below. Some of them you can go in, they're like proper antique stalls, and others have also got big tables in front of them so you can have a mooch at street level. Now remember, if you're coming on a Sunday, it will also be Sunday trading hours. So be mindful, even if you're up early, they will not be open. So the stores are literally setting up now. There we go, doorknobs. Get yourself some doorknobs and take them home. Um, but this place, Alice's, which I'm sure some of you may recognize, from the movie Paddington. So yes, you may recognize this if you are a fan of the Paddington movies. It's a cool little building. And as you can see, they're just opening up. Um, probably good timing. I think if you wanted to see the whole of Portobello Road Market, this video would be about an hour and a half long. But Zabby is a popular one. It must be open already. And I do say most places take card. You don't have to have cash. 
And all for the Instagram people out there, Denby Terrace is one that always gets filmed a lot. Look at these. I think one of the houses was getting redone a while ago, but yes, the ice cream, I always call them Neapolitan, minus the chocolate. <laughs> ice cream houses, but do remember people, these are people's homes. I know I'm being a hypocrite filming them, but don't be standing too much on the stairs. Now, this is a perfect example. So on the left, all the kind of late 1800s, early 1900s uh, homes, beautiful buildings, the back of that church that we saw a while ago. And then you have this development here on the right, which, yeah, was done, I guess, what is that, 50s, 60s? And why is it even called Portobello Road Market? Um, it basically came from um, a battle back in the 1700s in Panama between the Spanish and the Brits. And guess what? The Brits won. We used to win and we used to look after a lot of countries. We used to rule half the world, but that's a long, that's another story. Um, and yeah, and it just kind of stuck and people used that name, Portobello Road. Past the giant red teapot. Oh, it makes me happy that there's still tourists here, even on a Sunday morning. Ooh, a print and map shop. I don't think I've ever noticed that before. Um, I really like the old shop and how all of them are, yeah, quite different. Um, so you do have that kind of 50s, 60s sprinkle every so often. Oh, they're doing the pub up. Very nice. Yeah, the Earl of Londale, so kind of like old man pub, open for usual, gosh, that's a big sign. Um, but and then we're gonna cross at Westbourne Grove and head on further down. So where are we in the world? I started the video over here, we looped up. Uh, you probably are coming from the station if you are looking to visit, and I've gone all the way down here. We've had a mooch, we've had a mooch, and I, I'm here and we're going to head on further down and show you some of the famous places from the film Notting Hill and maybe Love Actually, if I remember. I always think that little tea room on the side there, Sally Clark, is so nice, like a little bakery. Good place to grab a coffee. You've got some art shops, a very, very expensive, as the bus passes, da, 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 a very, very expensive uh, fishmongers. I think it's a um, yeah, general store as well. And then the other side, um, just some really nice restaurants, to be honest. It's definitely very fancy. So Second World War, what changed? Um, the city had been heavily bombed. There was a lot of labor that was needed and there were other countries who were really interested in immigrating over to the UK, in particular into London. And one area was actually the Caribbean. So a lot of people came over from the Caribbean to London for work. And due to the potential of a booming economy over here in the UK, a lot of families fully immigrated over and stayed here. And Notting Hill was where a lot of people stayed. It was relatively affordable, dare I say, with those split housing situations. Um, in Notting Hill and then up to Labrook Grove and um, yeah this became their home but I do have to acknowledge where it is a Sunday you would usually have uh, market stalls all the way down this is actually quite nice to come down here um, when the stalls aren't here so if you do struggle with crowds definitely do come on a Sunday there's still lots of little stalls on the left I'm trying to give you tips because if you've watched my Camden video remember I'm doing all these free tours this is like a free thing to come and do um, and uh, whether you're gonna come to London or not do check out my free things to do in London playlist. I've got quite quite the selection on there now. I'm working my way through. Speaking of which, if you're enjoying this video, please do give it a thumbs up. Just click, click, click. I would really, really appreciate it. it really helps the video. Oh, there's a Colombian coffee store there. I've never noticed that. Hermanos. And yes, you've got quite the selection, whether you want some tourist knickknacks, some hats and belts, some leather goods. They've got it all. And if it is raining, which it probably will be when you come here, there also is an indoor antiques area. As you can see, people are setting up. Let me know, do you want a whole video with me showing you all of the stores? There was one stall in there and it had a lot of Ladro. I hate to break it to you guys, but Ladro was mass produced. <laughs> I feel like my family back in the day and my grandparents, and they thought the Ladro was gonna pay the mortgage off. Yes, so that is where the indoor market is. And as we go around, we get a little bit more, um, kind of rough around the edges. It's not quite so pristine. And actually there's usually market stalls in front of this. So if you do come on a non-market day, uh, you get quite a good view. But I do have to mention, even though this is the Notting Hill bookshop, it was actually filmed across two different locations. I'll show you the other one. It's kind of under construction at the moment, but you know what, it makes for a good picture. And in recent years, Paddington has definitely started to make an appearance from a merch perspective, shall we say, along this street. And you really can make a full afternoon of this. You can go to the pub, go for a browse, and you can see here we've got some kind of regular shops down here as well. And then the row of really posh shops. So then what happened? So 1950s into the early 60s, things were like not fantastic in this area. Um, as you can see, the buildings, they, they've been renovated and updated now, but they were all kind of, you know, a bit shabby yet not chic. And not to go into the political side of things, you know, in my videos, I like to keep them lighthearted. Um, basically, the Notting Hill Carnival was a bit of a 
peaceful um, reply to a particular riot that happened in the late 1950s and it wanted to be a really fun celebration for the Caribbean culture and um, yeah a big get together with a whole street party, a literal parade celebrating uh, different parts of their history and their country. And as you're watching this, I purposely trying to do this in time, so you know a little bit of like Notting Hill if you do read about the carnival, because it's this weekend. It is every uh, August bank holiday. But most people do get a bit annoyed about it because they basically have to board everything up. Because it's such a energetic uh, festival, shall I say, um, things do get a little bit damaged. So a lot of the houses, all of the streets, um, you will probably see it on the news this weekend. Um, unfortunately, they do have to board it up, which is a shame and I know it is controversial because of the cost. I think it's just a good laugh. Have a good time, guys. But yes, that brings us on to the electric cinema. Grade two listed cinema. Couldn't get it in shot, there we go. 0.5, it's absolutely beautiful. Very, very fancy. There's always pictures of like famous people coming out. They do have the diner next door, which is meant to be lovely. And a personal favorite of mine is the distillery, which is the home of Portobello Gin, which I think you can buy in Superman, because I feel like I bought it in Tesco or Sainsbury's before. Oh, there we go, the Sainsbury's. I am starting to get hungry, look at these goodies. Oh, almond stick. Oh, and that wasp, <laughs> you can't quite see it, is living life. Down the side roads, you have as well got these gorgeous muse houses, which haven't been fully renovated. You will see as you go around the area, some muse houses have been completely renovated into like multi-million pound homes. And some of them have still got those kind of stable doors, which are used as garages. And speaking of doors, do you recognize this one? Yes, so this outside was filmed here, but the main part was actually down by Westbourne Grove, because as you can see, there is not the house that Thacker lived in. Yes, across the way is where the uh, bookstore technically is, and it had a blue plaque. And this kind of thing makes me really angry. Look, they tried to make it really nice with different scenes and some losers who've got nothing better to do have come along and vandalized it. So yes, that was the scene that I was trying to show you uh, from the beginning of this film. So that is a bit of a shame, but hey, some people just need to get other hobbies, don't they? Now this far up the road, a lot of tourists don't really make it here. Uh, you've got the Portobello Arcade, which is like an Italian store, it's a bit more locals, and there is a huge Italian influence up this uh, neck of the woods, and Spanish as well, I would say. And why is it a bit different up here? So 1960s onwards, a lot of the fun creative culture uh, kind of came through underground music places, lots of artsy things and, and uh, food restaurants from um, people who had come from overseas. And quite a lot of it has been kept, obviously some of it naturally has moved on uh, to other parts of London but yes you have got another market which is a little bit difficult to film I must confess um, but it's a bit more like a traditional just a normal market really yes the colorful graffiti is embraced and um, I guess to talk over it but yes there's quite a lot of music stalls down here still some jewelry books and clothing this is called the Portobello Green Market I've been in quite some time actually right Sunday what is it I don't think it's 11 o'clock maybe about half 10 now um, food stalls are setting up so if you are coming down here and you're hungry just do a few more steps and come down here it smells incredible down here that Thai stall I'm trying to show you some of the prices you can see they're still setting up noodles falafel Indian Iraqi Turkish you name the country there probably is a food stall that's quite funny not happy hour not happy two you can see they've wiped out happy three or is that part of the marketing or oh, i like that that looks really nice in there and i wanted to show you all saints road this pelican pub is so nice it recently got refurbished look at the little like lamps that it has on very cool and it has some cute little places in a good coffee shop the tin shed i haven't been there in a while i could do with the coffee actually i'm gonna go for a run when i get home um, but yes this is what i mean down the side streets you've got obviously a little bit more of a local's life and i love the old shop runs look at tregs which looks like it's a fancy opticians or something like that now but it's still got the grocery sign and the old lights as well i absolutely love it love these little streets and also the painting of the houses has become a very big part of the area does anyone recognize this potentially the pink house anyone in fact the pink one that is featured in the movie you know when he knocks on the door and confesses his love to Kira Knightley? Is it cute or a little bit creepy? I feel like I could actually do a whole video on this area. Maybe I'm gonna save, I'm gonna save the rest of this because I could show you the shops, Dalesford Organic and 
the whole other area and then maybe into Paddington. I think that's another whole video actually, guys. Um, so with that said, I think I'm gonna love and leave you. Thank you for making it this far in the video. I don't know if that was a bit of an abrupt end, um, but hopefully me going on a bike, I think allows me to show you a little bit more of the side streets. I know I'm gonna get home and I'm gonna be like, oh, I should have shown you this Muse Road, um, but maybe I'll do an entire Muse house road video in the winter when it's all a bit grim to go out but yes i'm gonna cycle home i'm gonna yeah i'm gonna get a coffee i might go to bodyism actually and get some food and i'm gonna go off and go for my run i'm trying to run 5k five times a week i've done i did six times in the last week and i can feel it today i'm not feeling i'm feeling a bit achy i need to try and get i want to try and get to 10k i know that's not much guys but you know one one week at a time anyway i'm waffling as per usual make sure you give this video a thumbs up come and say hi over on my instagram and yes i will see you next friday remember i do videos every friday at 6 p.m uk time take care of yourselves guys bye